What's going on, guys? Welcome back. More commentary for you tonight. Do us a favor, like button, subscribe button, criticism in the comment section. Twitter, Shutdown Safety is my username. He is Double Plus Good Games, and we are going to talk about the entry to PC Football Gaming, Access Football 2015. Uh, this is a title that Danny Jugan was on to speak with us last week. Uh, we obviously had talked about its release being uh, today or yesterday, depending on when you're listening to this. And, and basically, we wanted to come on and give our impressions of the game. Never much to review a game on my channel, but certainly provide you some input. So the first thing I want to talk about with this game is the heat problem. Um, I ran this on a PC. I, Neil, I know you ran it on an emulated Mac. But even when I, when I windowed it, even when I lowered the resolution, uh, a few minutes into playing, massive amounts of fan run and heat billowing from this game. And I think it's one of the things that almost immediately, if it's not fixed, needs to be rectified. Because the game, to me, doesn't have enough graphical prowess if you understand what I'm saying, not to knock the game, but doesn't have enough graphical prowess, in my opinion, to generate that type of computing. I, I would absolutely agree. Uh, my machine burst into flames, and I was killed. Um, that's a little hyperbolic. <laughs> but actually, my machine heated up. It, the, I thought it was me capturing it, so I shut down the capture, and I ran the game, and I ran into the same issue. Fans whirring up and not whirring down. So as soon as I finished capturing, as soon as I, did, I shut the machine down, let her cool off for a little bit, and booted it back up again. So it's a definite concern because it is so... Uh, it was running so hot on both Mac and PC platforms, and I'm I'm hearing through forums, and I haven't talked to Jenny, Danny himself, but there might be a patch in play already as we're recording this to make up for that. But I I definitely that's something I'd be aware of when playing the game. Yes, other people did, for what it's worth, complain about the heat. There was a patch that was put out later tonight that neither of us have experienced with. But in fairness, I did tweet. Uh, both uh, Access Game Developers and the Access Football uh, asking about if there was some type of resolution. And to this moment, I have not got a response. So the plus side of this, of course, my laptop could also now double as a uh, pancake cooker, perhaps a very lightly well-done egg cooker. But, you know, it is something, all jokes aside, that you're going to want to pay attention to if you're playing this game and that's not been resolved. I do want to talk about just... In terms of the game, obviously, this is something we got for free. We're going to have a copy of this to give away. So basically, our investment, if you will, and I don't want to speak for you in, in terms of this, Neil, but you know, I don't have a real investment in the game. So I'm not coming from it as someone that's invested uh, $17.99 if you buy it this week, $19.99 if you, you buy it after this week. So I don't have maybe as lofty expectations at that purchase price. You know, I'm simply playing the game for what it is. Uh, and kind of giving you guys my intake on it. Um, first of all, I found that the game, in terms of running, uh, was actually fun. But you are going to have to curb your enthusiasm on this. I almost want to say that you're buying more into the promise of what it could be uh, than what it currently is right now. Um, you know, Danny really seems ingrained in the community. He wants to provide updates and modifications and improvements based on what the community wants and certainly this is a big step from what I saw from last year to this year but again you know if you're coming in thinking that this is going to be uh, you know a direct competitor of Madden or a replacement for all pro football you know you're not going to be satisfied with the final product and you probably should dial those expectations back it is a fun game to play uh, from the amount of time that I spent with it uh, it has some simulation characteristics that we'll talk about, but there are still a lot of things that are very unrefined and unpolished that are going to leave someone wanting a more detailed game very left out in the cold. You bring up some great points about the the way we came about the game. We came about it by getting a free copy, and I look at this in the same way I look at PlayStation Plus games. And now I'm not sure if people in the audience here have PlayStation Plus, but you essentially get two uh, or a few free games a month. It's like Xbox uh, Games with Gold. And with those games, a lot of them are not games I never would have purchased. So I lower my expectations, and usually I'm either pleasantly surprised or I'm like, eh. With this game, I felt like it was. I had a, a great time the time I played it. I thought it was a great hybrid between an old 16-bit or 8-bit, or I'd say 16-bit console game. Uh, really nice, runs at 60 frames a second almost. Uh, but 
it uh, it ran between that and what I would consider like a t iPad or cell or iOS or Android game. It was like that running that line. And the issue with that is that uh, I kind of really wanted to. You know, he's really touted his new games engine with uh, for the passing engine. And I think that was really interesting, but I definitely pined for the day where I could hold a controller in my hand and play this. So, you know, it's always the gamers wanting more. But when I played this, I really it brought back a couple of those memories of 16-bit uh, gaming, Sega Genesis, Super NES, where I was really into the, the football experience at the time. And if this game had a controller... Uh, like if you could add a controller in or if you could set up a controller configuration, I would definitely opt for that strictly because this is, that seems to be the way these games were meant to be played. Yeah. And in fairness, I used, you know, my keyboard as well. It does have controller capability. Um, to me, when we talk about having the controller, you know, running the ball was fun uh, because of how fluid it was. It was also maybe too responsive to a fault. You could do a lot of cuts at 180s and 90s. I will say the blocking AI was far better than I expected it to be. Uh, sometimes it's a little hard to judge when you're going to be tackled and when the defender is going to be blocked. But that was actually something that pleasantly surprised me. I will also say, in terms of something that surprised me, was the passing accuracy. It seemed, even on the computer side, increasingly high. You know, maybe 90-95% of passes that were caught were thrown actually very accurate. Uh, on the other side of that, though, it was very impressive to see a pass hit the ground. Think of the last time you saw a pass that was overthrown or underthrown hit the ground in Madden. It's not something that happens a lot. I also noticed I played the Washington team. Uh, they had a quarterback that was more prone to scramble. Whether that was designed or not, I'm not sure, because I don't think there's a lot of player characteristics. I think I was just more or less getting something arbitrarily happening. But the quarterback would scramble and then throw on the run and the receivers would move with the quarterback and try to open themselves. And these are things that, again, you know, we're not anywhere near to a point where we're comparing this game to Madden. It's nowhere near that standard, but it's things that you haven't seen in a football game maybe in a couple years if you're only playing Madden that it's good to see making an appearance again. I absolutely agree. And, uh, you know, I took the Steelman, and I was able to control Danny Jugan for, uh, for a couple of plays. And one thing that when I was playing it, what came back was those old 16-bit memories of me playing those games. So I caught a pass, ran down the sidelines, and I'll, be, I'll overlay the footage for this game. Uh, please ignore the interceptions thrown. But I would run down to the end zone. And something I used to do all the time in 16-bit football is if I had a steady lead, I'd just stop at the goal line. I'm like, come on, bring it in. You know, I, I caught myself doing the same things that I was doing in those 16-bit games, and that was really fun to have happen. And it was just kind of natural that it happened with the, the way the game looks and the way the game plays. Yeah, I felt a lot of Techno Bowl vibes to it. Um, al almost if you had a different camera angle in those games, um, it reminded me of some other games that I used to play that were kind of just two-dimensional. Um, some things that I saw that concerned me. Uh, it was hard to read the missed tackles. Obviously, there's no replays, and even if there is or was, uh, I don't believe this is going to be a, a game that, again, we're at the point where breakdowns are going to be uh, mandated. I think that the AI system, especially after talking to Danny, you know, this guy is going to get a PhD in artificial intelligence, is very good, even, you know, from what I saw about it. But I will say uh, some things I took a note of, harder to read the missed tackles. You know, I had times where a defender would be right there to tackle me. Sometimes it wouldn't happen. Other times it would. The same animation would play out. Uh, I did notice that for whatever reason, kicking extra points seemed far more difficult than it should be, uh, even when I was dead on with the accuracy and dead on with the kick meter, which uh, just to stop for a moment, I, I very much like the kicking system in this game. Uh, if they could maybe take anything from this game and implement it into another sports title, it has one of the cleanest interactions of a kick meter that I've seen in a very long time. But uh, in speaking to those kicks, I noticed when I was kicking and it going close to being out of bounds, where in, in real life, you know, a uh, who's ever going to return the punt or kick for that matter would know to stay away from the sidelines or let the let the ball go out of bounds. Uh, they kind of tend to stand there and catch it on the sideline or close to the sideline, which 
you know, probably is not always the best way to go about it. It seemed like you, in your gameplay, really enjoyed catching the ball and then running back to your end zone, which I thought was a very <laughs> interesting way of handling it. So I guess the the closing impressions we would leave you with this is, this is something that if you want to kind of have a different arcade style experience, something that's going to be fun, something that you're not going to worry about too much or maybe get too out of line about if maybe you, you win big or you lose big, this is going to be an option that you have to kind of knock around for 10 or 15 minutes, maybe a game or two, and, and really let loose some of those old football feelings and inhibitions that you used to have. Um, in terms of the copy of the game, uh, we've decided that what we were going to do is kind of have a trivia question based on the shows that me and Neil have done. Uh, back on the June 28th show, Neil talked about a game on the Wii U that he was a big fan of. So the first person in the comment section that actually lists that game, I will email you a code to you or PM you or you can get in touch with me on Twitter and you will get your copy of the game. Um, secondarily, probably no better time to bring this up because you probably already noticed in the description of the video, Neil and myself decided to devote a website to what we've been doing here. It's also going to be something the community is going to be able to grow with. Uh, the website is very simple. Neil's done a beautiful job masterfully of designing this. It is in its infancy stages, so we do expect it to grow. Uh, it is demandsim.com. Very simple. Demand sim.com. You're more than welcome to go there. Uh, right now, it's really just about us and what we want to do with the community and obviously just a commentary of what we've already created together. But hopefully, it's something that you guys and us can share in a vision to make football gaming a better place. It's a site strictly dedicated to football gaming, which is something I feel has been long overdue. Well, those are super kind words, and the site is absolutely in its infancy. And right now, what we're doing is we're trying to put a collective of the videos we're creating. We'd like to put together a forum where people can actually communicate and, 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 and you know, express grievances or, or talk about things that are great or talk about the, the, the parts of Sim that really matter to you because we do have a voice with the community. We found that out at E3 when, when Ryan was there. He actually got one-on-one -on -one time, and I don't see anybody else. I don't remember any seeing any other footage of people communicating at E3 the same way that Ryan was. One-on-one, -on -one, asking very pointy questions, very hard, and, and they were answered. And they were answered honestly, and a lot of them were, well, I would say EA answered a lot of questions very well, far more than I thought they would. But where else are you going to get that kind of dialogue on the, on, on the Internet? And that's why Demand Sim was born. So it was just a way to give us a way to communicate, uh, and the way for developers to communicate, and the way... Th that you can have a voice in the games. And the other thing is, you know, we're going to limit the videos that we put on there. It's not going to be every breakdown I do. It's not about so much breakdowns on that site. But like you said, it is about the discussion. What we wanted to do is have you guys have the ability to go and share this site with someone that you know that plays football or we can go to developers. It's not always easy for someone on YouTube to go and say, Go to my website. It's youtube.com forward slash double plus good games or forward slash Ryan Moody 21. Sometimes we all put things up on the channel that maybe don't leave the best impression with us when a developer or someone from the outside goes and looks at our channel. So by putting it on a website like that, we can make sure that everything we put forth is the most cl clean, precise, clear, professional iterations of the work that we can do. And not only that, I plan on making sure that the communication I have with Debs at EA, that I have with Damon Grow, that we have with Danny like we talked about, like we've had with Michael Mendheim in the past, can all be put forth there in a way where you can all at least see what these people have to say, if not interact with them. And that's what's most important to me, and, and hopefully to you, is that people have an outlet where they can feel like it's okay to talk about the problems, it's okay to criticize the game, and also know that the right people that can hopefully make improvements and changes are going to see it there and understand your feelings and why you have them in a respectful manner. I couldn't have said it better myself. I know, because you tried like 15 minutes before we shot this video, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> just I'm just going to say it. <laughs> so with that said, we appreciate you guys again, once again, really, as always, for taking time to check this out. We will be back later on with more commentary, and I will have a breakdown up within the next day or two.